This is one of my favorite games for students to play to work on their multiplication math facts. I do like to meet them where they are in their journey. Remember, there are a progression of strategies for us to be able to use. The foundational facts are those times ones, twos, fives, and tens. And so the game board on the left, you'd work with your students with that. If we have the one on the right, then we're working on related doubles of twos and fours can be double of the twos and eight can be doubles of the fours. And then we have this version here, which is for all the math facts. It's a wonderful game that involves a lot of strategy, choice, and really thinking about lots of different math facts and not just set on one. So how this game works, it's the same with all the different versions of the games. Our goal is to try to get three in a row, either vertically, diagonally, or horizontally. And we're gonna be able to put a marker on the product of the two factors down below. You'll see different factors for each of the game boards appropriate to their game. This is the one that has all the math facts and the highest factor we can use is a nine. Now to start the game, you can just roll a dice to decide what two numbers these first arrows are put on, or player one picks a plot spot and player two uh, picks of spots. Let's just say we picked the numbers one to five just to start the game. They have to start on some numbers. Now, green person is the first player here. They're gonna see that they can only move the green arrow. So I have to use this five here. Now the 20 is kind of in the middle here. So if I do the four times five and I put the green on that 20 spot, four times five is the 20. I can then be encouraged to explain my thinking. How did I know four times five? Uh, was 20. Now it's the purple person's turn. Now they can only move the arrow that is purple. So they have to use the factor that was given to them by the green player. So let's say I want to do four times four is 16. I'll move the purple arrow onto the 16 and I'll now, sorry, onto the four and I will get to own that 16. It's now the green player's turn. Now they're going to be moving only the green arrow. So they have to use a four. So if I look around where the uh, green is, and I want to be able to look, own one nearby, I'm going to move this to the three, and I'm going to um, have the green person own the 12. So three times four is 12. Again, I would explaining my thinking there. Purple person's turn has to use a three, so they might develop some strategies over time that they're seeing that they own the purple one right here. Now, a fact um, three is a factor of 27. So I could move my arrow right to the nine and I could own that 27. So now I've got two in a row. Now the game gets really interesting because as you give a factor to your partner, they may be able to use that factor to then win the game. So you're not just thinking about yourself and trying to get three in a row, but you've got to think about what factor you're giving the other person. So it gets super complicated really quickly here. So now it is the green person's turn. And I can see here that I, I could use a six to win or a 28 to win. And so would any of these factors allow me to get there? Now I can only move my green arrow. I have to use this nine. And six is not a multiple of nine and neither is 28. So I'm just thinking about myself here. I might choose to do, let's say nine times two. So if I'm not really thinking ahead, I'll say, okay, nine times two and I get to earn this 18. And I might be excited I could win here, there or here, but look over at the purple side. And because I've given my partner this two, they can multiply it by four to win the game. So lots of great thinking going on. Again, encouraging our students to be able to think through how they can find these products. We're de-emphasizing speed. You don't have to be fast at math to be good at math, but really awesome game for us to play together with our kids and practice those multiplication math facts.